So three years ago, actually just a little over three years ago, I was in Berlin for IFA. That's exactly where Lenovo announced their very first ThinkPad X1 Extreme. And I remember being super excited. And in fact, I even named the laptop my favorite laptop of the year. Because at the time, there was not a lot of competition in the ultra portable form factor. It was basically Dell with the XPS 15. It was Apple's MacBook Pro 2018, which was in a terrible place and state. And then you had something like the Asus ZenBook Pro, which not too many people bought. But this was special because it was a ThinkPad. It was a ThinkPad that was light, it was durable, it was made out of magnesium, and it just had a ton of ports. But then comes 2020, a weird year for all of us, and I'm thinking to myself, what's so special about this laptop now? There's so much more competition. Dell has revamped their design. They've gone 16 by 10. And then I started looking at this and I'm like, you know what? This is one of the only ultra portables left with a lot of ports. Like, look at this, you know? Like if you're in school or you're running a business and you're going into conferences, maybe not so much today because of COVID, but in general, like you have tons of IO to choose from. Not only do you get two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is kind of like the max on a Dell XPS 15, you still get full HDMI, you have your power connector, your audio jack, and then on the other side, you get two more USB ports and an SD card slot. That's a lot more than most other competitors are offering in this space. Now, I do wish they went 16 by 10. I really do. Like that's the place or the compromise a lot of companies should be. Maybe even three by two, which is my personal favorite, but they're still doing 16 by nine. And I don't blame them because this laptop is only three years old and for them to do a redesign now doesn't make a lot of sense. Now you can buy this with an OLED display like I have here and it's super color accurate with an insane gamut, but it still suffers from PWM flickering. So if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, if the brightness is below 50%, it might affect you. The keyboard is exactly the same. The nipple's exactly the same. It still feels very good. The touchpad is good. It's glass. I wish it was a bit bigger, but obviously they had to limit the space in order to include the buttons for the nipple. I don't think it's the best touchpad. Like it's not as accurate and smooth as the Surface Laptop 3, but it's still a very good touchpad. Now, one area apparently where they improved were the speakers. They're still on the bottom of the device in the exact same position, but they're supposed to be better than the previous model. So let's do a little comparison compared to the 2019 model, and you guys let me know which one sounds better. Internally, I was expecting a very similar layout to the 2019 model, but because this is a 10th gen motherboard, they did make some changes. For one, you still get two slots for storage drives. One of them is populated with a very fast NVMe drive. You have two slots where you can upgrade the RAM to 64 gigabytes. Because this is a 10th gen Intel motherboard, the RAM inside here is faster than the previous model. Interestingly, there's a third slot. This slot over here has the potential to put in a third card. It's not gonna be a 2280 form factor, but something smaller. Battery life, unfortunately, is still bad. In fact, it's worse than the previous model. I'm only getting about two hours and 45 minutes of use before needing to charge. Now, the model they sent me is the Intel 10th Gen 10850H. This is a slightly faster version of the 750H with the same amount of cores. The other difference is you get a faster GPU compared to last year. Last year it was a 1650 Max-Q, this year it's the 1650 Ti Max-Q. In fact, the only way to tell the difference between last year's model and this year's is if you look at the top of the lid, okay? This year, they combined the X1 right under the ThinkPad. Last year's model, they separated. That's the big change in design. Now, performance is better, as you'd expect for an iterative update, but it's not huge. Like, we're talking about a 15% performance upgrade across the board. The GPU's faster, the CPU's faster, but at the end of the day, it's not a big performance bump. They also introduced this new ultra performance mode, which basically just pushes the processor to its full potential, and I like it. Like I was getting some great results. Yes, it's gonna hit the 90 degree Celsius point and you're gonna see a bit of thermal throttling here and there, but it never dips down below base clock. The clock speeds stay nice and high and it does it for a long time. Eventually it will power throttle to help reduce the heat on the CPU, but the performance coming from this thing is fantastic.
Fan noise is a bit loud though. Like we're approaching 50 decibels on an ultra portable and I would have loved to see that around 45. There's a bit of whine, which is expected when these things are being pushed, but overall it does a pretty good job. Look, at the end of the day, this is an iterative update to the previous Gen 2. It's still a fantastic laptop, but I think for year four in 2021, it's time for a change. Keep the ports. That's your, that's your competitive advantage. And on top of that, introduce a 16 by 10 or three by two aspect ratio. I think if you just make those two simple changes alone, plus fix battery life and somehow manage the fan noise, you'll have the best ultra portable on the market. If you're upgrading from Gen 1, you'll see a nice performance bump, but if you're rocking Gen 2, there's nothing really to be jealous about. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, because if you did, I'd love if you subscribed to the channel, like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.